Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to change the presentation of a bar chart. In the last challenge we created a bar chart, but there are a couple of formatting challenge changes that could improve it. So one, we want to add space between each bar to visualize separate to visually separate them, which is done by adding a margin to the CSS for the bar class. And we want to increase the height of the bars to better show the difference in values, which is done by multiplying the value by a number to scale the element. So yeah, this is right now a tiny little bar chart at the top of the thing. Um, and you can't really see the difference between them. So if we add spaces in here, and if we make it twice or three times as big, then we'll have a better bar chart to work with. Okay, so here we've got, there. I'm going to expand this so our code is more visible here. Just keeping, the instructions can be easy to read like this. Uh, <clears throat> so first we want to add a margin of two pixels to the bar class in the style tag. So here's the style tag, and we want to add a margin of two pixels. So we're going to say margin of two pixels and um, to the bar class in the style tag, the bar class in the style tag. Next, change the callback function in the style method so it returns a value 10 times the original data value plus the px. Okay, so here they've rewritten our our element here. Um, let me think, is there a way to easily say this? If we were to put this onto a separate line, um, this needs to actually be in here. Pixels. Um, in order to do this, we would actually need to return um, and we would need to call return here to make it into this. This just makes it so that we can do a console.log of D. And so you'll see here what we're doing is we're iterating through here and with each element iteration, the, we're console logging out D. So if we've got 12, 31, 22, and that's where this uh, data set dot enter, that means that we're adding a new element with each one. And so what they're saying is they want to make it times 10. So let's, we can to multiply the D, we can make it times 10. So now we've got a 120, 310, 220 uh, multiplication. And in our test, we know we want them to be like that. But this is not where we do this, right? We, this is just console logging it. What we want, if we want our bar chart to do it, then we do that. And um, it's possible that you'll have order of operations challenges here. So let's just ex make this explicit for now. Okay, so that's where it's working. I'll bet you this passes the test. Okay, so now let's we can refactor this back. Um, we don't need to console log here because that's just for testing purposes. Um, this could be like function like this. It would work the exact same way. Um, but we're, we're, we're not going to do it this way. We want to do it the ES6 way, right? So we're going to do it like that, run the test. That still passes. But the ES6, you can do single line. So we could get rid of this guy. Um, and then if you do it single line, you don't need these guys either. And uh, that works as well. If you run the test, that passes. Um, I don't think that we actually need to worry about the order of operations here. So this, we can actually have it like that. And we want this uh, call, comma here. We run the tests. These guys still pass. And another way you could do this, I'm not even sure that you need this parenthesis. Run the tests. It's cool. That even passes. And if you wanted to make this even more succinct, we could use string interpolation and make this a high tick and this a high tick and then just um, put the money sign in here and then do it within the string. And so then I think we would have the same answer as well. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, all those things that, that I talked about just are ways, just trying to make it so that it's easier and so that you guys understand this at, a, at a, as deep a level as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.